Welcome to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to educate and inform the viewer about technology and technology-related topics around the world of virtualization. Today's video presentation isn't necessarily going to be one that revolves around virtualization, but one that may be useful in your home lab, and one that I recently found a need for. So, my wife's MacBook Air recently had problems and required a reinstall. This wasn't a big issue because I use my Nextcloud server and back up that computer one or two times a month, but it could have been much bigger, and it got me thinking about an automated backup solution. Well, MacBooks by factory contain one called Time Machine. Time Machine is a very useful tool, but one I hadn't been using, mainly because I never wanted to purchase a backup appliance that was compatible with Time Machine. So it got me looking about how to use a Samba share, or maybe even an NFS share, to back up a system with Time Machine. And I came across this blog right here. Now, it was a pretty informative post, and pretty simple to do. But I wanted to go ahead and actually walk you through the steps. I thought my viewers might like it. I know a large majority of you use Windows or Linux and care little about Macs, but my beloved MacBook is my beloved machine after all. Although I love Linux and can use Windows with not much of a fondness for it, I do see a point in those systems. But my MacBook is my trusty day-to-day -day driver that I go to for anything simple and easy to do. So with that, let's look at how I set this up. You'll notice here that I've already got one set up. And I probably won't be running all these commands in full so that I don't mess up my setup. But I wanted to walk you through the process. And hopefully, even without running the commands, you find it useful. So, first I went to my Proxmox web interface. And I created a new container. This was an Ubuntu container. And I called it Mac Backup. You can call it whatever you want. Then, I installed Samba on it set up the correct securities, and set up user accounts. With the user account set up, I configured Samba, just as I would have configured Samba in one of our video tutorials before. If you need a tutorial on setting up Samba, go ahead and look at our videos. There'll definitely be one or two on how to create a file server using Samba. So, with that, I then had a working Samba share. I went off following the steps, and went to go, then I went to connect to server, and I entered the IP address of the server with the starting of SMB colon slash slash. Then I clicked connect. After clicking connect, I got a share that looked like this, with this. Now, depending on how you configure your Samba server, it might not have a title of this. This is configured at the point where you put the brackets in when you configure your server. The name doesn't matter. It's as you desire. Then I had to create a disk image in the system, right here as you see it. To do that, I went to Launchpad, went to Other, and then went to Disk Utilities. With the Disk Utilities screen up, I then had to go to File, New Image, and Blank Image. Here at the blank image, I had to then give the file a name. I also had to give it a name here. This name will appear right here when the disk image is actually mounted. And I needed to take note of the size. By default, disk images start at 100 megs. I can tell you 100 megs will not be enough for your system. Now, just like LVM images or QCOW images, or however you want to refer to them, this image will be dynamic. So although it takes up up to the limiting size that you configure, it actually won't take that much space unless it is required. So if you click here and we go to get information, you'll see that my on disk size is only 54.66 gigs. So here at 100 megs, I multiply the size I want by 1024, or the size of a gig in megabytes. So if I entered something like 3200, 
you'll get somewhere around a 300 gig partition. That number isn't exact as I'd need to do it on my calculator in order to remember it. 300 times 1024. 307 200 is going to be your correct size for the 300 gig disk image. So then I want to make sure my format is this APFS. With that being done, I create the disk image right here. Then I go in and I mount this disk image so it will appear over here in the locations, just as so. You'll notice I already have a time machine back up here, but your disk image will have no data in it. So, with the disk image then being created, we're going to run this command here. Notice his ending of his path. The ending of that path is going to be the name that you configure the drive to, in my case, toolman backup. So I would enter slash volume toolman backup. Let's go here, and if I press the up arrow, you can see the exact command I ran right there. And the first time you run this, you're actually going to get an error message. To fix that error message, we're going to go to System, and then we're going to go to Security and Privacy for this one. Full Disk Access, you're going to unlock your system, and you need to give Terminal Rights. To give Terminal Rights, Terminal actually won't appear here. You're going to need to hit the plus, and then you're going to need to go to Applications, and down to your utilities folder, find terminal right here, and click open. That will make terminal appear here, and then you can go ahead, go back to your terminal, which it will make you reopen, and enter this command again, and you'll be able to run it that time. I heavily suggest afterwards you disable the right and relock your system. So with that, now Time Machine will actually show up. But there's a couple things I want to do. So as I'll be wanting to use this as a backup drive on some form of schedule, I'm going to want to go to Users and Groups, select my user, enter Login Items, unlock my system again, press the plus arrow, and I'm going to want to select my Samba mount and hit add at that point. Then I'm going to want to do this again and go in, select our backup disk image and hit add. This will make sure that your share and your backup image mounts on every restart as long as you have access to your system. I use a VPN so I have little worry of my system being unable to access this, but I may have a few login problems until my VPN achieves. If you're on the road, well, maybe you're not doing a backup anyways, and maybe you want that backup to fail until you get home. It's all up to you and how you want to use your system. Now it's time to start with Time Machine. So I open Time Machine, and here you'll notice that your drive appears. That's from the command line command you entered. It'll set that. So you have a few other things to do before you can run this. I click backup automatically so it would set up a schedule and backup my machine. Then I clicked options and you'll notice that right away this line here, the toolman image, doesn't back up. I also have this here and it's due to an install issue on my system that I never resolved because frankly I didn't care. But you can also add other things here if you would wish for your system to not back up. Remember, anything you add on this list, your system will not back up. Then you hit save, and I also clicked show time machine on menu bar. This is a personal setting, but when you have it, this little clock or time machine emblem appears up here, and you're able to manually set backups.
just by clicking right here. You also get some other easy configuration settings. With that, you should just be able to click back up now and your Mac will begin using your Samba share to back itself up. That is all that is to setting up a time machine backup using your Samba server. I hope you enjoyed tonight's presentation. And if you're interested in more virtualization content, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing to continue to follow Virtualize Everything in their endeavors to bring virtualization educational content to YouTube and beyond. As always, have a good night.